They want us now in 2024 to address wages and salaries issues from 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. They expect us now to adjust the wages for that period. We said it's a non-starter. We have pointed out about the growth in education expenditure, the increase in wages and salaries for teachers, especially at the upper end. The, the, the 6,000 people who were trained or are being trained now through the Gold Scholarship, teachers. If we do that, we'd have to address for everyone in the country including maybe the sugar workers who got zero in the whole afternoon period. Welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy, and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. Now, after all them months, all them teachers from all the different regions in the different areas in Guyana, everyone came out. Parents came out, students came out for so many weeks on the road. The international community voiced their opinion. Everyone that did everything in that time. Here we are today, April 2024, and nothing yet for the teachers. Now, I want you to leave your feedback in the comments. Do you think? that the teachers should have came off the road until the situation that they went on the road for was satisfied. Even before the situation was satisfied, they came off the road. Do you think that was a right decision? Leave your feedback in the comment section. Let's have a conversation about this. Because look, we need to keep our fingers on this button and not take it off. Because look what's going on. Presently, if we pay attention to the tone and the conversation that the government is having and the back and forth banter, filibustering and all of these different tactics that's being used on the populace, we will clearly see that it don't look like if these teachers is going to get this money this year, you know. And there's what them girl telling me. And there's why I feel it's going to be the outcome because it didn't look like if... Nothing is going to go in a different direction just after the conversations that's being had. The tone, the tone alone, the language that's being used is letting you know, look, it's a set of bring wrong, come wrong, go wrong, kai wrong story. And no money in passing here, but everything we are done get, or you should see it and how you should appreciate the things that you already have and the things to come. But the real thing that people talking about, the international community talking about it, and all them thousands of teachers asking for it, the money, the increase, this is what the VP is saying. And we don't know as long as there's the tone that's coming from the VP, Jack Dio. Most likely, that's going to be the tone of the party, allegedly. We're going to get into this conversation right now. You leave your feedback in the comment section and let's have a conversation about this because it's important to every single child and every person in Guyana. Thumbs up the video and send it out in the algorithm. And let everyone that needs to see this, see this and let the world know. Teachers still didn't get nothing yet that they was asking for, allegedly. And the world needs to know that they're about to strike again. Now, we have pointed out the state of affairs of the GTU in relation to financial accountability. Over an extended period, they have, the government has transferred, deducted and transferred over $2 billion to the GTU from teachers, and they can't account for it until now. They have no audited statements, nothing of that sort. So, this matter was adjudicated already, and the Chief Justice at that time, Ian Chang, ruled that if the government, this is an executive decision, 
And if the government chooses not to, to deduct, it doesn't mean that the sums are not deductible, but the union has to make alternate arrangements. You recall Coretta McDonald acknowledged that, and she said, we will get our deductions collected through MMG. So that's the second case that we are waiting for a ruling on. That's the second ruling we're waiting on. Our argument, this is an executive de decision, and therefore the judiciary should, can't tell the executive how to conduct its business given the separation of power. So the, the mediation that was <clears throat> imposed by the court led to a re-engagement between the two parties. And they made a proposal to go back to address wages and salaries issue to all the way to 2017 in the APNO period. So they want us now in 2024 to address wages and salaries issues from 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. They expect us now to adjust the wages for that period. We said it's a non-starter. If we do that, we'd have to address for everyone in the country, including maybe the sugar workers who got zero in the whole APNU period, but we, not, we, we can't go back into the past. We said we are prepared to engage you in a multi-year agreement now, going forward, a three years agreement, make your proposals to the multi-year agreement going forward. <clears throat> Notwithstanding that, we have addressed several of their concerns. They have submitted about 41 issues. We did about 20 something of those issues. They don't, they don't see those as financial, but they couldn't even defend them in court because they have financial implications. They were arguing that these are not financial issues and then had to concede in the witness box that they are financial matters that we've been address, addressing, addressing since 2010. I think we met with them more often than APNU did in the entire period. So I subscribe to the view that this is not driven by the best interests of teachers. Further, we have pointed out about the growth in education expenditure, the increase in wages and salaries for teachers, especially at the upper end. The, the, the 6,000 people who were trained or are being trained now through the Gold Scholarship, teachers, our, as our commitment, and we said, it this didn't happen in the five years, it didn't happen any time in the past, this, many, this much help to the sector. So, so we believe that it's driven by Congress place. And this wouldn't stretch your imagination to see that there is a political motive to this. Because the head of the union is one of the most rabid members of the opposition. And the opposition were extremists, racist, and, and squatting on the general secretary position, or if you look at it the other way, squatting in the parliament, because our own rules prohibit her from being there in parliament as general secretary of the union. But she ignores all of this, and the media has already ignored it. The media has never gone after her and harassed her. Why aren't you, why aren't you resigning? Why are you in in breach of your own rules. You, you better believe it. If that was happening to a PPP member, the, every day there will, be, there will be calls and there will be the social media will be hung in them, etc. Nothing is happening there. So it's not a stretch of the imagination to believe that she would politicize the issue. It's not a stretch of imagination. She, re she made it race re at the very beginning. You, you recall her statements that she could get a number of seats with these teachers' votes and all of that. So I wouldn't put it past them. And then the Lincoln Lewis joining in. You know Lincoln Lewis, he, he's a, a PPP hater and a, a person who was 
as I, I call them parasites, but um, it's lived off the workers for a very long time. I don't want to pay too much attention to Lincoln Lewis today. Yes. So that's Dr. Jagdew, finally, um, finally. I want to urge the teachers to, to work with us that we, we, have, we have major plans for the education sector. The remuneration will grow in the future. We have to be balanced, but in the future it will grow steeply, remuneration. And, um, and we have major plans for upgrading the education sector and the skills of our teachers. A natural way to stay ready, baby, because I'm ready for you, Mr. C. Or to cost or whoever it is, took my statement uh -huh. and he shoved it in a pretty old body. What? You understand? <laughs> he take my statement and he push it in a bumsy. What? <laughs> There's what we do, right? And like I said, I'm doing a documentary about this whole thing, and we're gonna get everybody exposed. And you see that live in guy in a page that is run by Kwame Makai, oh. right? We coming for them talk, Colonel, um, Comrade Colonel Jones or whatever. I am watching everybody. It's just that me and Tag Mila is them, yeah. right? But they got something when the police and one want charge the politicians, right? Yes. Go ahead. Sorry. I oh, say so you're very manageable because this is what confused me. Question, are you currently married? Yes, I, I am married. I'm oh, happily yeah. married. We're expecting another baby right now. We have not announced it, but um, I'm okay. I'm about to have three children. Okay, next question. How did you know your wife work at a hospital? Do you know your wife, well, allegedly is cheating on you with a doctor? The Cuban my doctor? Wife is not, my, my wife is not cheating on me. Okay. All right? I can just tell you that I, I am very, I am very much confident that okay. my wife is not cheating on me because I know, I know myself and I have that, that, that level of okay. confidence in my relationship yes. and in my life and in my wife. Okay. I love my wife and my wife loves me and we got each other's back. It's the hardest thing here that's going on. It's, it's she's saving enough people because she's saying that I don't need to stoop to that level. Okay. Is she saving so enough people? So let me tell you something. Me let me tell you. Oh, 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 let me tell you how serious I am. Yeah. Right? You see, I got, I got, got all my um, my cameras and so watching, mm -hmm. right? But you know, it's right. Yes. No, I knowing how troublesome this Otis Pearson could be and how much he is out to get me. He is out to get me, sorry. I was preparing for them to come by me tonight, sir. Yeah. Right? You see? Oh, shit. I was That's preparing right. for them to come by me tonight. <laughs> right? You see the thing we're saying about F up and done? There's not one person put F up and done. You see, I come out here and I am I, I am easy going and I don't mess around with nobody or yeah. nothing like that. Yeah. Yes. Right? But <laughs> I ain't no easy, I ain't no easy person, okay. Mr. Pearson. So if you want a confrontation, you need to come, right? You need to come. And you see how, well, like how quick you run off the line when I come on the line? Because listen, if I took off the police step and threaten you, you said to fuck you up, what more you want to do? You serious? Uh, the, police, the police station is Otisha's domain. Okay. <laughs> right i uh, i want her to come i mean him i keep saying her him that individual has a penis and it's a man right 